Welcome, guys. Thank you so much for coming along. I uh, appreciate you giving your time. Um, how are we doing today? Good, yeah. Happy to be here. Looking forward to, to getting going, getting a few questions out there. You're just talking off air about getting down to, to carry and steaming in down the hill. So uh, I think we've all signed off on that with, with Joe and Ted here on the call. We've, we've locked that in for some team participation down there in Kerry. So looking forward to that. Excellent stuff. Um, so obviously, guys, um, this will be your first season with the Reds. Um, you've got quite important roles as captain, vice captain this year. Um, is that something you saw coming or is it is something you, you, you were looking for? Uh, I suppose, how, how did it transpire? Yeah, well, for myself, personally, it's probably uh, just the right time for me. Um, I've kind of been around the enterprise now for a good bit of time and, and played with a lot of different players and been under a lot of different captains. Um, so learned a lot on the way and obviously with a bit of a mixture of international players and, and youth players, um, up and coming players in our squad, I just thought it was the right time to kind of take on a leadership role and, and help advise them while um, learning a bit more from the international players. So something I was really excited about and, and once I was confirmed to play that in Munster, it was at the forefront of my mind straight away that I was happy enough to, to lead if given the chance. And uh, once I got the honour then, I was delighted then to kind of get to get guys on board as well as, as vice captains I think we'll work well together we want to play an exciting brand of cricket I think and we both play that way ourselves and hopefully if we we lead from the front that way then the others will follow which is, is what we what we're looking for awesome stuff um and then Ted um what was the kind of thought process there behind um choosing um Perron and Gareth there was um was it straightforward decision or were you mulling over some things um, like there, there was a few elements to it, I suppose. There's um, we 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 do keep in touch with um, Graham Ford around you know what they see as kind of succession planning down. But then at the same time, while we listen to what they're saying, it's about what's best for us down here primarily. Um, and TK, I suppose, from his perspective, has a lot of experience. Um, Garrett up and coming in his kind of uh, career as such. And I think the two of them get on extremely well, which will be an extra bonus for us, you know. Um, and also you have to be, I suppose, you, you don't just put in a vice captain for the sake of it. Like if, if something did happen with TK, then Garrett obviously steps in straight away and he's more than capable um, to lead. So I, I think there's a combination of factors, but looking at looking at the, the guys in the squad, um, I think the best fit for us was was the two lads here um, going forward in, across the two formats. Okay, and um, Gareth, then um, <clears throat> I suppose um, making that uh, jump up from club cricket to Interpros, um, what are the kind of me main differences you've noticed? Um, as, you know, you bat and bowl, so you have, you know, <clears throat> you're three-dimensional cricketer there so what's what was the biggest jump up for you well it's the standard is the the main thing um but it's when it was primarily just the three teams every other side pretty much had five internationals where you go from a club game where you might only come across one or two so um obviously standards big difference awesome awesome and um <clears throat> Then I suppose um, this goes out to both of you. Um, how do you think, moving down now to the Reds, how do you think your roles change? Um, <clears throat> obviously, being part of the leadership group, do you think, um, not out of pressure, but do you think there's extra responsibility on you now to, I suppose, motivate the guys through performances and stuff? Um, yeah, I think the, the lads will be motivated enough. Um, setting personal goals, I suppose, they'll, they'll have things that they want to achieve. Um, playing with the Reds, um, whether it's pressure or not, it's, it is added responsibility, but it's probably responsibility that I personally relish. Um, it keeps you in the game. It, it gives you um, kind of a lot of the tactical nows you need as well to kind of play the game that you want to play. So being really involved in the game for every single ball um, as captain and vice captain, we're kind of working together to try and solve problems or solve batters weaknesses and stuff like that so you're always thinking and you're always in the game so it's something that I always look forward to and something that I'm definitely relishing is, is getting in the battle and and figuring figuring things out as a captain and, and getting us over the line with, with anything captaincy now or something like that if you can bring on a bowler out of nowhere and he gets you wicked and it changes the game like stuff like that really excites me so stuff like that I'm, I'm really looking forward to awesome and what are your feelings on that Gareth yeah, I suppose obviously now that we've moved down to Munster, we're the senior players. 
there's added responsibility there that can't really leave it up to the younger lads who maybe don't have as much experience and will be important that the likes of myself, TK, Curtis, that we lead from the front with the bat and ball. And then... <clears throat> uh, would you mind, can I just ask a quick question of the lads there, just in relation to your role skills-wise? There isn't, is there much of a difference between where you were and where you are now, say, coming from the Lightning, just regards to your skills, not, not so much about leadership? So is there any kind of role changes there? Personally, go ahead, guys. Now you're right. Now you're going. Go ahead. Uh, personally, probably not. No, it's probably more of an opportunity, especially with the ball for myself, where I'm probably not going to be the third spinner. I'm going to be the front line or the second spinner. So I'm looking forward to trying to lead the spin attack and get more overs under my belt. Yeah, then I think for me, maybe um, even the back end of last year in the Interpros as well, I've kind of changed up my role from, from, from taking the new ball. Um, so probably a different role to me is batting a bit higher up the up, up the order, which I'm really looking forward to. And obviously with the Lightning, you've you've got a, a top seven there that's packed with international, so it's it's pretty hard to get up the list. So yeah, I'm happy to to slot in in the middle order now, Monster, and, and get a better better chance to to show what I have with the bat and and then have a, a bit of a different role with the ball. And I think the way our team is set out, our skills kind of plug in nicely to, to how we want to play our cricket um, across the board. We have everybody playing the, the right roles, um, in my opinion. Awesome. So <clears throat> first game is uh, next Thursday versus the, versus the, the Warriors. Um, <clears throat> how, how are the feelings in the camp? How are we, how, how are we doing, I suppose? Skipper? Yeah, I think we're going great. Great guns. Um, uh, we had... Some good practices um, in the nets. We've been very lucky to get two pitches at every practice session we've had. And we've kind of created the slots there where lads get as much time as they can um, in each net. And the bowlers are getting the workloads going. The, the batters are hitting a lot of balls. So um, I'm, I think everybody's ready to go and everybody's kind of hit the ground running. Um, and I think everybody's just really excited to, to get going um, after such a long break. Um, getting back into training is very exciting. And then Obviously, starting off on Thursday, it's something that I think everybody's looking forward to in the squad and getting ready to, yeah, again, hit the ground running on Thursday after putting in the hard work at training. Awesome. So are there, I suppose, are there games that you're looking to specifically target that, um, you know, this is what we want out of it? Or are you guys just looking to take it one, one game at a time and, you know, build from there? Yeah, I'd say it's probably just take it one game at a time. Uh, not trying not too far ahead and just try and get one win to start off and then hopefully build a bit of momentum through uh, first half of the season. Um, yeah, I think it's important to just get the ball rolling. I think that's the plan. Once you, you gather a bit of momentum, you get the first one going, the second win, the third win, and then hopefully you're out of the traps coming around the bend. Um, pretty hot in our new red kit, so something <laughs> we're looking forward to. <laughs> I think Tala, one of the one of the key things would be for, for any of the sides in the competition is and obviously there's a game going on today is who who kind of adapts best, earliest and quickest on, on certain days because not only are we early season, but it's the first time we're out and mm. you can get it was like our first time training out at the high performance center. Lads were giddy with themselves, they were whacking balls all over the place. It was great fun, great to watch. Um but when you when you kind of pair it back down, it's about I suppose who who's gonna adapt best as a unit and also individually. Um, you know, do you concede shots as a batter early on, or do you just play your natural game? All these kind of key things are, are going to be massive, especially in the first couple of games. Um, mm. and it'll be interesting to see now that the scores. Um, have we an update by the way? Anybody got an update there just so we can? The Warriors are 74 for four after 22 overs, yeah. So, like again, even looking at that, you might say, Well, look. You, you arrive to a ground and you're even saying, you know, sometimes it can be difficult, but what what's a good score? You know, first season, and it might even be the wicket. It might just be the fact that it's the first game of the season. So there's, there's I, I take exactly what Garrett said, is the first game is is just taking it on its own and, and trying to get a good start. But what does a good start look like as far as the lads are concerned, you know? Cool. Um, and then I think the, the competition you have, you play the 50-over cricket first, first five games, and then all T20s thereafter do you think that's a better way of doing it so that you're not um i suppose in and out from different formats and you can just kind of i suppose set your targets accordingly go ahead guys 
Yeah, I think even just chatting to lads and different teams, I think everyone's kind of looking forward to the fact that it's, uh, it's blocked off now, uh, mm-hmm. each format. Because in the past, lads found it a bit difficult to go, whether it's from a three-day game into a 50 over and then a T20 on the weekend. So I think lads are looking forward to the fact that they can build a bit of momentum and get into a bit of form in a certain format. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Um, I suppose this is uh, more of a question I kind of want to know about. Um, do you guys have a pre-game kind of preparation that you do? Is there? Do you have a certain routine you go through or is it just... You know, you come in, you do your drills. Um, are, you, are you superstitious? I know, I know a lot of cricketers are. Um, they talk through that a little bit. Well, guys, I think we could be here all day with your superstitions <laughs> and your routines. So we can take that one. I don't know how long you have, Salah, but uh, if the Zoom call ends after an hour, we could be here a while. Ah, I don't think I'm too superstitious, but no, it'd be kind of a set routine. Uh, each game that I like to do palm rolling first before anything else and then obviously if that's up to do uh, batting and bowling try and get through both of them uh, for a certain amount of period and then try and relax 10-15 minutes before the start yeah that's try cool. is the key word there I think <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah personally for me I think we're similar enough guys I suppose we both bat and bowl so um yeah, I don't. I know myself. I'm superstitious with batting. Is that I put on my left pad before my right, and then my right glove before my left. That's pretty much the only superstition I have. And then just yeah, to rocking up and bowling, um, in the morning of the game. Uh, I don't really hit balls, uh, before on the game day. Um, rarely I just pick up the bat before I go out to bat and see what the day has in store. So you you had some um thing previously from memory about freaking out if people touch your bat is that still an issue for you? Uh, yeah no i still have that yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i remember we played a game we were marrying against the hills um a few years ago and the lads were messing around with me saying oh if you touch your bat like you won't get any runs and literally just before the wicker fell when the lads touched my bat i went out got a golden duck and <laughs> they never touched it again <laughs> so i don't know that, that that doubled down on my thinking anyway after that so i was like please don't touch my bat <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> makes no difference I don't think but anyway. um, so obviously uh, you have quite the, the Red Squad is quite young and it's good to see you know longevity um, but I suppose as a, as a young cricketer <clears throat> in Munster um, what can they do to prepare themselves to make that step up to um, the pro cricket obviously as Garrett mentioned it's you know, the level is quite different. So what should you be looking to do? And, you know, how, how are you looking to approach the game? And how, how did you personally also approach the game once you did make the step up? Yeah, well, probably, I think they're doing great work down there. Um, I'm on to cricket. I've seen some, some pictures on social media of the, the young players um, getting back out training. So having that pathway, I suppose, to kind of show um, all the kids that, look, there is a pathway here to, to play club cricket and then, play for Monster Reds and then hopefully go on to play for Ireland. So I think there is a there is a channel there and a, and a pathway. And um, I was discussing during the week as well um, that hopefully when, when we're allowed to get people back into the grounds and if Monster Reds are going well and, and there's people coming into the Mardike, I think that's only going to promote the game down there as well mm-hmm. and, and kind of getting people on board with, with what we're trying to do and, and having locals on side with us and then creating that pathway, like I said, for, for young for young players to go like, look, this is this is what's ahead of us. And, going to youth training down down at the grounds down there. And if I go well, then this is the opportunity that that I'll have to play for Monster Reds and, and kick on from there. So um, I think there, we have some players in the squad that have gone through those channels already. So it's it's obviously working. And something that I'm really looking forward to is getting down there and um, getting getting my hands dirty and getting my teeth into helping out as much as I can to, to get these players through and to get these people seen and, and get the opportunity. So... Personally, that's something I'm looking forward to kind of maybe outside the games, but it's just creating a bit of hype around Monster Reds and, and, and getting people on board because if we're winning games then at the Mardike and there's a few people in and a few pints of Beamish going, then it sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> could, lads, could you just explain to people maybe who are, who are listening and watching, so we, we say that the standard is higher, but if you look at bowlers, for instance, for a second, right, what is it that they're better at at interpro level as opposed to club level? And then likewise with batters. So if one of you take the bowlers, one of you take the batters. So maybe just explain what is it about them that makes, that when they collectively come together, that makes it a higher standard. 
Oh, you face the new cherry guys, so. <laughs> Banning. Um, I think the banners, anyway, they, technique wise, they're solid. They don't have too many deficiencies in their technique. And then I think just mentality, their mental toughness. Now they approach the game, they don't give too many chances. They take their time and they look to bat deep and bat big. And they can ride through those tough patches. So when bowlers are on top, they know if they get through, it's going to be easier the other side. Um, and then I think they just put more pressure on you as a bowler as well. They have more shots and they have probably more belief in their ability and what they can do. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, it's, on the flip side, sorry, right. on, sorry, Tyler. Yeah, the flip side of that is the bowl. And then it's, you just don't get as many loose balls. I think that's probably the main thing is that the, the bowlers are always at you. Um, if the bowlers are on top, you feel that you're not getting as many balls to score off. You, you kind of have to create the runs yourself. And maybe that's just the jump up and standard from club cricketers. You might get some some four balls or some easy deliveries to get yourself going. But in inter-pro cricket, um, they don't come as often. And then even further again in international cricket, it, it's smaller again. So really tests all, all sides of your game, I suppose. And if you get runs, you deserve the runs at that level because you have been tested. Okay. Um, and that was just, I suppose, in general. But uh, so the Munster Heat this year are hopefully going to be playing maybe eight to ten games, um, covered uh, permitting and stuff. But I suppose specifically for that squad and those guys, um, would they be looking to do, you know, anything different to what you said there, or is it, is it different that since they're in the setup and um, I suppose they have a bit more access to the coaching and stuff but like what are they what, what should they be doing specifically to try and make that jump up i think, I think it's just learning no go on ted you're right yeah no I, for, I, the heat is 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 a very very important side of this for us um and i think it, it'd be unfair to say that there's not going to be opportunities if guys don't perform in the emerging competition because it's not good for the guys in in the 12 or, or squad that we have that their places are nailed on no matter what and likewise there has to be um like what what is the purpose of, of the emerging competition if guys are not or if they're performing and and not knocking the door or bashing the door down so from that perspective it's it's a hugely welcome um tournament because they're getting to play both formats they're going to play you know four different teams um the irish 19s as well obviously so um that, that's going to be a huge one for us and they'll know themselves that that's another step up because they're a bit like the lads are saying that you don't get that many balls to hit. The bowlers are asking more. They're asking more questions. Um, so for us, for us down here in Munster, I suppose that that's a huge thing. Um, and the fact that we we'll have a lot of access to training um, on grass, is, which is a new thing as well for for these guys. So yeah, really excited for that. And what we're going to try and do as well is when when the Heat are training, if the lads are down um, before a match, say in the Mardik, the Reds, is get the senior guys along and 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 have a look at our guys, get eyes on our guys, and start talking to them. Um, because obviously the lads experience is, is huge um, and having that rub off will be massive for, for and, and, and for our local guys, you know. Awesome. Um, I suppose just a little bit away from <clears throat> Reds cricket as well. Obviously, both of you guys <clears throat> have international experience, which, you know, <clears throat> is great for the, the Reds themselves. But um, I just kind of want to talk through um, y- your international debuts. Um, I suppose Tyrone first, uh, you played in the inaugural test. Um, I was uh, I was there in the crowd that day, and you could just sense it was something special. Um, but maybe you could talk us through what the what the first, well the first day was rained out, but the first day of cricket. Um, it was, what was the feeling of the camp, and how you know how how did things go? Oh, it was Jesus deadly. <laughs> I don't know. It's was, it was probably my proudest moment um, on a cricket field, anyway, by a country mile. Just just it was a real sense of um, togetherness and kind of thinking about everybody who's been on the journey with cricket in Ireland, if that was kind of the overall sense is that all the players that had gone previously, like everybody had had some small role and some part to play in getting us to test cricket. So obviously playing a test match is probably the, the highlight of maybe anybody's cricket career is maybe test cricket is, is the be all and end all. Um, but there, there was a real sense of the players that as previous players from the, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, every single player that ever played for Ireland had small, some, some small part to play in, in getting us to that test match. And then obviously we started off 
really well. I remember, I think Boydie got the first wicket as our alley caught. And I think it was maybe the first time that I really felt that a roar go up for a wicket, something like that in international cricket. There was fans um, in the stands and you could actually, like when we were on top there, kind of Mertz got a couple as well. So you could actually, any time a wicket fell, like you could yeah. feel it in your body that like the fans were up in the stands. And then obviously I was down the other end when Kev got the first hundreds and um, the first test match hundred for cricket Ireland. So I was just dodging balls left, right and centre because I was getting bumped out of it. And then Kev came down the other end and made it look like they were throwing underarms. So I don't know, maybe we were facing different bowlers, but he was seeing, he was seeing them all right. Um, but yeah, we put on a bit of a partnership there. And, uh, yeah, him getting a hundred, that was absolutely brilliant to be actually out in the middle to, to have that on your CV. Um, yeah, hopefully there's many more to come now. Hopefully there's a few test matches and everybody else gets that honour because um, it's something that I'll have for the rest of my life and something that I look back on extremely fondly. Mm. I, um, <clears throat> I remember that the very first baller in the very first over, um, Imam got cleaned out by Gary Wilson. Yeah, that was my me. Yeah, I think it was me. It was me and Niall O'Brien. I, oh, I remember that. That was the very first ball, I think. Yeah, I was actually... We have a bit of a joke with Tim where it's a gone that it just slipped out that the first delivery for all was an accidental Yorker. Uh, so, yeah, and then I think Emmanuel Hack got stuck in a Niall O'Brien and Kane sandwich and I think the lenses <laughs> of his glasses fell out. It was his desk debut as well, so it was all going off. Uh, but I think, <laughs> I don't know, that probably settled the nerves because, yeah. I don't know, it's kind of <laughs> a bit strange. I, like, it's amazing because the amount of cricket games you've played I don't think it, that's ever happened in my life. And then the first ball and test cricket, some lads, some lad gets crushed and his lenses fly out. Something we won't be forgetting. Um, and then, <laughs> uh, Gareth, uh, you debuted against uh, Zimbabwe in uh, T20 cricket in 2019, I believe. Um, talk us through your day uh, about getting your cap. How was, how, I suppose, how did the, game, did the day go for you? Yeah, probably wasn't as glamorous as TK's uh, first cap. It was a, uh wet and windy day up in Breedy, so I think it was only a 13 or 14 over game, so uh, I think I only got an over two to bowl and didn't go too well, so it was probably <laughs> one that I'd uh, quickly forget about, to be honest, um, but no, yeah, as, as TK said, like, it's a dream come true, like, you work so hard to get the opportunity, and then once you get the cap handed to you, you feel as though you're part of something special, so, um, yeah, love the day, but just wish it hadn't rained as much. Um, I actually fell for guys. I think we were playing there as well, guys. And it was, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it was minus degrees, rain and wind, and you yeah. got thrown the ball with a small short side boundary. I don't think you could even feel your fingers to roll them out. <laughs> trying to ball, trying to ball leggies in April up in Derry was was a test. So I think it was only up from there, which was great. Um, and then I suppose um, this is for both of you. Um, you've uh, you've done a few away tours. Um, I suppose what what was your favorite away tour and kind of the highlights of it um i suppose for me the t20 win against the west indies um when paul serling and kevin o'brien just came out of the traps i think they had like just under 100 in the, in the six over power play so i was pretty pretty cool to be able to witness that and then uh Coming down to the last ball to win a game against the West Indies in their own place, and um, yeah, it's probably the best time I've had in an Irish ship. Nice. And how about yourself, Taron? Um, I think actually being over in England during that COVID uh, recently, where we won the last game, and um, there's kind of a sense in the camp that I didn't play, but we were over there, and there was a sense that we could actually win a couple of games here and we kind of let ourselves down in the first couple of games. I don't think we performed to the level that we we expected or we wanted. And then kind of in the third game, coming back to kind of to beat the then 50 over world champions in their own backyard was was great. And and the way uh, Balbo and Sterlo both got big hundreds is just a joy to watch. And I think that's probably the level that we wanted to show. And we maybe let ourselves down in the, the two games and then actually having a performance like that shows that we're up to that level and we're, we're more than capable of turning anybody over on their day. Of course, 100%. And <clears throat> Gareth, this is uh, something I, I, I kind of wanted to know. So uh, your your batting stance is quite quite unique. Um, I think um, I, I like unique. You look at Steve Smith, Gareth Bailey, or sorry, um, George Bailey. Um, everyone's got their own um, batting style and like obviously it works for you. 
but is is that something you kind of grew up with or is it um something you just kind of picked up as you went along um yeah so i kind of i got injured in 2015 so i kind of missed year of cricket um so then i think i kind of almost forgot really how to hold the bat and then it was just literally dad would throw me balls and try and hit them pretty much as hard as i can and kind of just ended up at that kind of position not that i actually really knew until TK did his impression of me one day. I think it was maybe up in uh, Stormont, and I think, yeah, realized how high they actually were. So. It's it's almost baseball like, and mm, it's cool. Yeah. I I like seeing different batting styles. It's I the, think the, uh, pen, the pendulum of them is what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> but um, do you feel it um it helps you play certain shots better, or is it just see ball hit ball? Yeah, I think probably. Try and get your hands high naturally, even when you try and hit the ball hard. Um, mm. But probably start at a lower point. Uh, just seems to work for me. So keep with it for the moment. Um, obviously, your, your natural game is to be aggressive. I think your international strike rate is about 150. Um, is that, have you just always played cricket like that? Is, is that you, you look to dominate? Is, is that just your thing? Um, probably, yeah. Kind of after that injury, to be honest, that's kind of, I think, when my game kind of changed um, before that I was probably low strike rate 60 70 um, and then came off once or twice in a game I was like this is, this is more fun than trotting around so <laughs> try and keep to it and then I suppose in, in the first six overs during the power play uh, what's kind of going through your head do you have specific targets or again is it just score as much as we can yeah I think especially in T20 anyway it's kind of got to make use of that first six it's the easiest time to bat so um, yeah you can get away with missed hits and whatnot so if you think of balls out of hit just don't leave any of them behind try and whack it I suppose and um, as a spinner um, you've opened the bowling a few times um, I said for Ireland as well and um, do you find it do you find it an extra challenge oh you know obviously when you're having two fielders outside the ring and um, what are you looking to do to I suppose minimize minimize the damage yeah can be tricky at times to see it. You can think about it from a batter's point of view, like the intent is to try and score off as many, but then at the other hand, it does give you a chance to get a wicket, especially if you're on first or second over where lads haven't actually faced the mm-hmm. ball. And I suppose just I think when I come on in power play, try and keep it under 10 and over. And if I've done that, I personally, I think that's a decent enough job. If you get a wicket, all the better. Yeah, especially being a leg spinner gripping the new white ball can't imagine it being um, easy um, and I suppose for you Tyrone as well what, what are you looking to do um, with the ball especially when uh, in the first six overs uh, is it just containment or are we looking to take as many wickets as possible yeah I think personally for me is is if you can get wickets in the power play it's, it's so key because it just it's kind of stunts the run right and a new batter has to come in and kind of start again so um, if you can get early wickets with the new ball if there's any any swing, any nip uh, with the new ball, you, you have to give it a chance. Mm. Um, but, but once the batters get in and if the batters are going well, then it is kind of damage limitation as much as you can. And I'm just trying to trying to outsmart the batsman and, and just use your two fielders as, as much as you can, I suppose. And I think as we've seen is the, the six overs, is, it's getting harder and harder as a bowler because the ball can just kind of go to all parts now. So in some regard, it is damage limitation. But if you can, if there's anything on offer, you really have to use it. You really have to get mm. give, get the ball up there and give it a chance to get wickets because if you get wickets, it, it, it's it's shown that it's it stuns the run rate a bit. So it's kind of a bit of both. Mm. And Ted, this one specifically for you as <clears throat> as as a as a coach, not necessarily the Reds coach, but what are team what should teams specifically be looking to do in the first six? As you know, the guys mentioned, you need to be keeping it tight, getting wickets. But um, are you, do you take it? I suppose. Uh, do you take the opposition into account, the pitch? Or what is it that you need to be doing to kind of maximise those first six with the bat and then, I suppose, with the ball as well? I think it, it's all, again, like I said earlier, about adapting, you know, so like the batter has strengths, the bowler has strengths, and it's it's where they meet in the middle. Um, I think the main thing is intent. You know, it's um, at the same time, we've already spoken about this, is that there's a, there's a figure, a magic figure out there if you don't want to lose more than two wickets in the power play personally if you have a bit of depth in your batting can you change that a little bit um but it is as gareth said 
and TK, it is a huge part of the game. Um, and I think it's just about intent. I mean, the bowler, all the lads know each other. They really do. They, they know each other uh, so well. Um, and I think for, for any, any kind of cricketer, it's about taking all those factors, putting it in a blender. But at the same time, you've just got to play the ball that's, that's bowled to you. Because too many times, I remember having a really interesting conversation with Kevin, o, Kevin O'Brien about this, is that he, he used to premeditate a lot based on the field. So he would nearly have shots already predetermined in his head based on the field that was set. And he'd either make poor decisions or late decisions as a batter. So when he when he just started, started and the hardest thing sometimes is just playing the ball and clearing your mind that way. So I, I think you have to look at what's around. You look at the pitch, you look at the ball, you look at the field, but you're still back to what are my strengths as a batter and then just playing the ball that's delivered. It, it can be a hard thing to stick to sometimes, you know? Because mm. there are all these internal distractions and external distractions. Yeah. <clears throat> and then I suppose, how would you define intent? I know everyone has their own kind of, some people say, you know, it's it's score as many runs as you can, or it's about how you approach the game. But what would your definition of intent be, Ted? Um, I, I think you're, you're, you're looking to score all the time. That's the okay. thing. I mean, well, I remember going back when I, I'd, I'd be a fan of stats and, and, and analysis. They're not for everybody. And I mm-hmm. think they're more for coaches and um, some players like them. Some players, it confuses them. It gives them too much information. So um, 10 years ago, dot balls weren't a big thing in, in T20 cricket. It was all about strike rates. Now it's coming back around to strike rate plus dot balls. Can you not have that many dot balls? As So I, I, I think it's, it's just about looking to score as much as possible and again a, a, a really interesting part of t20 is when the power play stops is that there seems to be this kind of subconscious shoulder dropping of all right we've got through the power play let's just knock it around um and that traditionally is a period where run rates can drop off significantly so again trying to keep that intent and and looking to score as much as possible all the time i mean it, it you can break it down and go into detail but it is that just having always looking to score yeah. um and I, I think when, for us down in Munster, um, you know, we, we haven't played a lot of structured T20 cricket. We've only maybe played it for the last five years. We've been brought mm. up on a, on a diet of 50 over stuff, which was, you know, that, that old traditional forward defensive shot that somebody take a picture, please look how gorgeous that is. And it's getting away from that, you know, and, and it's looking to, to knock those good balls. Because when you go up that level, as the lad said, you, you not only have to score off bad balls, you have to score off good balls as well. And it's developing those kind of skills. Okay, perfect. Um, guys, um, I suppose probably time to wrap up. We've been here a while now. Um, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate it, you giving your time. It's quite insightful for myself anyway. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed yourself as well. Um, I don't see any hands up, so I suppose no questions. Um, first game is on Thursday, so um, best of luck with that. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to get to all of them. I will be there at the home games, so I suppose I'll um, I'll, I'll meet you then and um. We'll get you up on social media and get lots of pictures of you. Sounds good. No, no pictures of me. No, no. no. <laughs> we don't. We don't want to lose followers. Um, <laughs> all right. On um, that note. <laughs> perfect. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, have a have a lovely day, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Tyler.